Welcome to this short introduction to Instinct V, software for the Microlab Vantage. In less than 10 minutes, you'll see many of its features and how it's used, and we'll take a quick tour of the user interface and watch Instinct V in action. First, let's define what is Instinct V. It is the software that automates your protocols, methods, and assays on the Microlab Vantage. It has an easy-to-use graphic interface where you define where system components and labware are located. It has a drag-and-drop assay creator where you specify what items will be used. And after you define how the liquid will be transferred, it will automatically schedule and simulate the run in 3D animation. And to program Instinct V, as you just saw, you simply provide three elements. Where system components, carriers, and other resources are located. What items, such as tips, plates, and tubes, will be used. And how you want the liquid transferred between sources and targets. But now, let's move on to the features of Instinct V. And afterward, we'll take a quick tour of the user interface. You've already seen this first feature. It's the easy-to-use drag-and-drop assay creator. Both labware and pipetting actions are graphically represented. For example, here you see both buffer and reagent added to wells on a plate. Or for more advanced pipetting, an object-oriented programming language can also be used, and it's called XSL. Another feature is that work lists can also drive assays and there's an easy-to-use interface for that exact purpose. For even greater flexibility, both labware definitions and liquid definitions can be created or edited. So you can define any labware or liquid classes needed, including modifying any built-in definitions. Custom dialogues are especially valuable for operators, and they're easy to create. These custom dialogues can be simple operator prompts, button presses, or they can allow values to be entered and evaluated during the run. And any dialogues or library items are easily added to the assay from the drag and drop extensions, just like you see here. The scheduler is another important feature because it plans and creates a schedule where all the required labware, pipetting, and transportation are predefined. There's no need to specify when or where items are moved because the most efficient transports are set up and will be used at runtime. And you can see this in the Gantt chart that we call the scheduler. In addition, Instinct V will also coordinate any transports or device usage or pipetting that can occur in parallel. This results in speed and efficiency within a single assay or between multiple assays, such as workflows. As you see here, the circle area shows that pipetting, centrifuging, sealing, and transportation will all occur in parallel. All consumable items are also calculated and managed, as you can see here in the scheduler. And this can include the number of tips, plates, and even the required amount of liquid from specified troughs. Another feature of Instinct V is the automatic management of all loading, unloading, and reloading of items required for the assay. And of course, before you run the assay on the actual instrument, you can simulate all the activities and transports on a 3D animated model. So you just saw many of the features of Instinct V, but there are others, including reusing tips between runs, smooth error recovery, and more. But now, Let's look at Instinct V in action and learn what the user interface can do once you tell it where, what, and how. After logging in, the first thing that appears is the dashboard. And it's like the dashboard of an automobile. You can see if any maintenance is required, if the instrument is connected online, if there's anything scheduled to be run, and the user that's logged in. Above, you see the navigation buttons. You'll use these all the time. 
you can create new documents such as assays, workflows, and transfer patterns or liquid definitions here, and you can open existing ones here. You can also use these Windows-like commands, and everything is detailed in the manual. But now, let's open the system document, and that shows us our instrument definition. And here's the system document that I've opened. It's already created for this tutorial. All the parts you see are selected from the parts list, and they appear in the inventory. Your system will be a little bit different depending upon your chassis and everything that you've ordered. And this instrument view is the basis for the 3D model, and it's also the basis for where things go. So let's go to the workspace view of our instrument model. And here in the workspace view, you select the resources. We call them position resources, and you determine where they're located on the deck or for devices if they're off the deck. This is where items are located. Now let's set up an assay and that will determine exactly what is used. And here in an already created assay is what will be used. Labware, tubes and plates, simply drag and drop and any actions that you want, simply drag and drop. For example, to remove liquid from the tubes to the plates or from this plate to wells on another plate. And to define exactly what is used, double click and you get the properties. This is where you select the labware type and the starting and ending positions. That was the where. Now they may be beginning at one position and move to another position, such as plates from an entry exit to a carrier or from one carrier to another. And so now you can see that in the assay we define what is used. And finally, how. Editing this pipetting action, you can see here we can use a transfer pattern or a work list. In the transfer pattern, simply click on the ellipsis and the document opens. And it recognizes the action from the tubes to the plate. You simply drag which tubes go to which wells on the plate. And that's how it's to be done. So by defining where items are located, what items are to be used, and how the transfer is to be done, let's go ahead and click this button to schedule the assay. And here you can see the resources to be used and all the consumable items. And now we can go down here and run the assay and it will begin by initializing. And then as you can see here, the load dialog will appear. And here's the operator prompt. Here's a description and the status of everything used. We'll click this button, prepare loading, and this button to start loading. And finally, you can watch the animated 3D simulation of the assay, including the pipetting activity, just like this. And there are controls right here for different views, and you can use the mouse wheel or these other controls to zoom in as you like. And so you can see where items are located, what items are used, and how it's done. And when the assay is completed, you'll see the unload dialog with the operator prompts. Simply click the button to start unloading and the final button to clean up the unloading. And with the assay simulated with no errors, it can now be run on the actual instrument. Now that you've seen the features of Instinct V and what it can do and seen it in action, the next step to learn how to use it is to view the next tutorial called Build an Assay. And on behalf of everyone at Hamilton Robotics, thank you for watching this introduction to Instinct V.